Cottage garden style is one of the most perennially popular garden styles and that's partly because it's easy and it doesn't in fact have any rules but it has lots of ideas. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog and I've come to talk to garden designer Tim Pilgrim whose interpretation of cottage garden style with naturalistic planting is gaining him a reputation around the world. So Tim, tell me what you consider to be the main characteristics of a cottage garden. I think when you put contemporary in the front of cottage garden, they're kind of there isn't too many rules. Uh, as far as a planting, repetition is something worth considering, as well as a clearly defined colour palette. So what sort of a colour palette would you recommend? I mean, what did you think when you started with this garden? How did you choose the colour palette? Uh, well, I always look at the colours of the house, especially, and try and relate the planting back to that. But it's also about the surroundings. So we had lots of green, so I knew that it was going to be shade trees, so there had to be a little bit of intensity um, pop through the season. But we planted lots of greys to kind of soften it against the, the to contrast it with the green of the oak, and some socks of pastels that kind of reflected the the greys and straw colours of the bush behind it. So how did you decide to choose the plants? I like to choose things for the four seasons. So we think of um, how they look into decay, if we're looking at winter, uh, how they contrast early in spring, and then really looking at the seasonal highlights. So, you know, bulbs and the layering and the emergence. So just making sure we've got the verticals and the form and daisies and, and flat heads. So you're contrasting the flat heads of daisies with upright yeah. things like salvias, yeah. things like that. Yeah, so I think that's almost as important as, you know, colour. I'd say use 70% safe plants and have a go at the other 30%. I think a good rule is the 70% if you can plant them in blocks, so groups of three to seven, on repeat, so if you're planting a line down a path, looking at drawing your eye down the picture, and if you've got that 70% covered and you're thinking about height and where it's positioned in the garden, the other 30% can be all experimental. They can be more sporadically placed and in drifts and you might get some really lovely surprises out of it. So looking at this group of plants here, what would you say are the safe plants and what were the ones that were experimental? The safe plants were certainly the Centranthus ruba, and that was the Selvia alignotha, the bog sage. The poa was a really safe bet too. This part of the garden is where we transition from more uh, from the cottage garden framed around the house to a more naturalistic layout, I suppose, bigger drifts uh, and simpler planting. What are your safe plants here and what are your experimental plants? Verbena is certainly a safe plant and Calamagrossus is generally a safe plant. And then this grouping here, safe choices and experiments. Safe <laughs> choices were certainly the stachys, very reliable and boisterous plant uh, that needs to be controlled. And I suppose the Lepicinia was a bit unknown. I've grown the Lepicinia, I think it's Lepicinia chinensis, yeah. in a lot drier climates, but only to half the size. So that was a very happy, happy experimental win the height we got out of that. So this is a sort of yellow and blue and grey palette, isn't it? Sure. And so what what would you say are the, the safe plants there? Uh, Erigeron is certainly a safe plant. It flowers for about nine months of the year, if not longer. Mm. The Achillea, I was actually going for a different cultivar, but it wasn't available. So this was, I think it's called pineapple mango, but it flowered really early. It, uh, well, it was late spring and it just held its colour perfectly. It's it's kind of gone from a salmon to a butter yellow, so a very happy experiment. But also the Fabascan um, Southern Charm. I'd never used it and I like to play around with biennials and some gentle self-sowing in the cottage garden. And that was, it came very small in mail order pots, but it's just, it started in mid-spring and it just keeps repeating and repeating and repeating and it's got such a lovely antique pink yeah. um, colour to it. Yes, it's lovely, that one. Mm. So this grouping here, tell me about this grouping here. This is a very safe planting, but very classic. These were some of the first plants I picked as kind of the backbone through, through the garden. The only one happy mistake would be that we got a Saccus Byzantina that's a slightly different cultivar to the rest, but it's on its own and it's, it's standing up really well. Uh, the experiment in this neighbouring planting is the Alcamilla mollus. I, I know it's very common yeah. in the UK, yeah. but not here. And uh, I'd grown it once before or tried to and without much luck, but it really paid off this time. 
Talk to me about how you decided to frame the door and the path leading up to it. We decided to frame the cottage because it was really the original part that we're standing in front of is very symmetrical, very classically early 19th century. Uh, we've planted roses, climbing roses, and they've nearly reached the top in the first season. Um, uh, we very simply planted a buxus hedge on yeah. the deck and an on border in front of that. What, how did having such an amazing mature tree impact your design? Well, we were kind of stuck with it, but it was an amazing asset to have. It just provides so much protection and, and cover and little microclimates around the garden. So it allowed us to, there's an exposed site that was more, more dictated to more of a dry garden planting. There were, there's a full shade part of the garden, which is, you know, more of a woodland kind of style planting. And then there's almost a second palette that is part shade to one that is full sun. So it was good, but it certainly provides a lot of mulch. What are, what are your sort of favourite cottage garden plants that you've chosen here? Uh, I think one of the heroes of spring, uh, which I haven't used a lot of before, and I don't know why, was the uh, alliums. We had allium purple rain that was sporadically kind of staggered through the, the planting in big drifts, and that was kind of the hero of the garden in spring. But also, the like I say, the hard working, you know, we've got stachys in here in big repeats, grey foliage repeats through the through the plan, but things like Origeron and Centranthus, really simple but effective. In, what about in terms of landscaping and where do you think landscaping belongs in a cottage garden theme? We've got rooms here but they're a bit more informal. The cottage isn't actually symmetrical to the to the gate and that was really important that it stayed offset. Uh, so we we had we've got curved paths ev everywhere but we framed it in other ways so the planting itself kind of frames the cottage. We mounded some of the garden beds to give a bit more height at the back and lower at the front so that we got a really nice kind of uh, convex shape on entry is what you're kind of greeted with. Although the path isn't straight, the planting kind of wraps around the entry. So you do use different levels of planting because the border we're in front of at the moment has been slightly raised. Did you raise that? Yeah, so there was a natural mound here. We probably accentuated it a little bit and there was a certain amount of site cutting that went on just to make sure the main levels stayed the same. And instead of removing that fill, we kind of exaggerated those mounds and um, mounded up where we thought was appropriate to, I suppose, get a little bit more height in the planting. But also it gave us, you know, a fraction more real estate, which meant more yeah. room for plants. And this lovely border edging here, which is uh, made of wood, you put that in, did you? Uh, I didn't landscape. That was uh, the brilliant work of uh, Grant Smitten. He did all of this as per my hand drawing, but uh, he's a real master and I kind of let him have at it and he, he asked me questions along the way, but I can't take credit for the handiwork, just the, the thought to put it in. In terms of choosing materials for a cottage garden, what would you recommend, particularly if you want quite a contemporary feel? Well, I think even traditional cottage style gardens, so back even kind of looking at the arts and crafts style garden, they were kind of handmade and very natural. And I think contemporary gardens can have the same, same kind of materials. I didn't want to complicate it too much. I felt that red bricks worked really well um, for the era of the house. And we kept it simple with Corten steel that kind of disappears really. Uh, a very simple sand path that is easy to rake when we've got lots of deciduous trees and just brought in some more timbers with furniture as well as the retaining wall. And so if you're choosing furniture for a contemporary cottage garden, what would you suggest that people try? So a heap of different angles. I, I like anything cane. I think that's quite traditional and, and a cottage garden. I think it's got to be relaxed. It can't be too forced and rigid. Nice warm timbers. Uh, we've got a big dining table over in the alfresco with some cane chairs and bench seats. Yeah, just nothing too contemporary and sharp. Would you say that there are any mistakes that people could make if they are trying to do a contemporary cottage garden? Too many different plants uh, can be too confusing. Also, not looking at the staggering of emergent plants coming through. I think it's important to think about it through the seasons and not to put all your eggs in one basket because it doesn't have to be. If you plan for, for example, spring bulbs, followed by early spring perennials, there's a group there, and followed by some emergents coming through for the summer show and then you're addressing uh, form and contrast in you know, seed heads and, and leaf and autumn colour, uh, I think you can't go too wrong. How would you 
say that a cottage garden can become more contemporary? Uh, I think grasses is a really good way to bring it into the to the now. Traditionally they weren't really a plant that was used so in the Victorian era. It gives a really relaxed feel to the planting, gives a lot of movement. Uh, it also brings in a heap of different wildlife. Speaking of wildlife, how do you build wildlife into a cottage garden? Uh, into a cottage garden I think you have to look at leaving the garden stand into, de into decay, into winter. So creating habitat and diversity in your planting as well. That's where the grass with different, different flower forms and you know shrubs, perennials, bulbs, really looking at the whole picture and supporting the biodiversity that, that you have in your area. Of course, if you want to adapt a style, it's always a good idea to know what the original was like in the first place. So don't miss this video about what is cottage garden style and how to achieve it. And thank you for watching. Goodbye.